Delighted to be joined by uh, Policing Minister Chris Philp on College Green in Westminster. Good morning to you. Good morning, Julia. Um, time's very tight. Obviously, we had that breaking news about the uh, Defence Secretary, uh, Ben Wallace, who has resigned uh, from that job. Uh, he says that uh, the, uh, the, what the Britain is on the path to becoming once again uh, world class. Uh, but he does also warn uh, that over the next decade, the world will get more insecure and more unstable. Now is the time to invest. Uh, do you agree? Well, look, I don't want to um, preempt what the PM and Chancellor might want to do with defence spending, but I think Ben has done a great job as Defence Secretary for this country over the last few years, um, particularly uh, helping the fact we've led the way in arming Ukraine and resisting Russia's barbaric and illegal invasion. We've provided, I think, more military support than any other European country. Very often we've provided the support first, you know, before other countries, whether it's the anti-tank missiles last year or the Challenger tanks. You know, we have often led the world in helping Ukraine, uh, although the Americans, of course, have provided more uh, weapons in total. And I think Ben Wallace played a really central role in making that happen. And, you know, I think he did a, did a great job and we okay. should thank him for his service. Uh, let's also talk about uh, well, your area of your responsibility and this is a policing. Uh, the government's announced that to make it easier to sack rogue police officers, not just rogue, even criminal police officers who committed heinous crimes like the likes of uh, Wayne Cousins and David Carrick, rape, murder, um, when they're found to have committed crimes or gross misconduct to automatically, on the spot, be sacked. This is something the Met Chief Sir Mark Rowley had asked for. Um, why was this not already the case? Well, look, I mean, when I became police minister just a few months ago, a number of people, including Mark Rowley, the Met Commissioner, asked for these rules to be tightened up to make it faster and easier to remove people who shouldn't wear the uniform or carry the badge. And that's what we've done today, giving senior officers uh, more power in the process by chairing the panels, making clear that misconduct, gross misconduct, will automatically result in dismissal, uh, requiring officers to pass vetting, not just when they join the force at the beginning, but then to maintain that vetting pass throughout the entirety of their career because uh, I want to see and I think the public want to see uh, people that don't deserve to wear the uniform getting quickly removed uh, but Julia we should also I think keep in mind that the vast majority of police officers are decent hard-working and brave yep. we saw that tragic case just a couple of days ago of Sergeant Graham Saville from the Nottinghamshire force uh, losing his life in the in the course of saving a member of the public and that I think exemplifies the best of police service and that applies to the vast majority of officers mm -hmm. But that small minority who don't deserve to carry the badge um, need to be quickly removed. And that's what today's reforms but, will ensure. But again, what I don't understand is, you know, you talk about Wayne Cousins. Sarah Everard was killed in 2021. Within months, Wayne Cousins had pleaded guilty um, uh, to, to her, uh, her murder. Uh, he was sentenced July 2021. It's now August 2023. What's taken so long? Yeah, well, I've, I've been in post a matter of a few months and, you know, on my first day... So did, did your predecessor not think it was worth doing? We've... we've well, look, I mean, look, I can only speak for myself, OK? I was, you know, asked to do this by Mark Rowley and others. Louise Casey wrote that report, made similar points, and we've taken action. Uh, and, in fact, there's more we're, we're doing. Every single police officer in the country is currently being run through the National Police Database to see if there's anything untoward in their background, and that goes beyond just criminal offences. So, huge amount of action taking place. It's vital the public have confidence in police, and I think today's announcement will ensure that happens. OK, there's another announcement yesterday as well about judges in England and Wales to get more powers uh, for to force criminals yeah. to face their sentencing here the victim impact statements from families and those that are victims of their crimes we saw this this came up um, uh, when Lucy Letby refused to attend the uh, the sentencing for herself and hear from the families of the babies she'd killed and attempted to kill we saw this with Thomas Cashman last year who shot dead nine-year-old Olivia Pratt Corbell um, but we're told that the, you know, the ultimate sentence a judge will have or punishment will be another two years behind bars but Lucy Letby serving a whole life sentence that wouldn't have been a deterrent to her do we not not need to make it not even discretionary a requirement that if the families want it in particular the victim wants it the judge will require if necessary by force for a criminal to be brought to the court to face their sentencing well and that's what yesterday's announcement by the prime minister said it said no, it that doesn't. the judges can order the use, can. the use of reasonable force to get the defendant into the dock they can order they get the powers to do so most people thought they already did have the powers to do so they've done so before but 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 you know as well as I do that they'll say oh they'll be kicking and screaming they'll be shouting we, we don't want to do that they won't have the prison officers to do it they'll be an excuse every time 
Well, look, I think ultimately management of the court process is for judges. The judiciary are rightly independent, but these regulations may, or the law that will be passed is, is going to make it clear that the judges can order the use and you know, should order the use of reasonable force to get the defendant, one, once convicted, into the dock to hear the sentence. And on the point about the sanction, an extra two years on the sentence, it's a very, very small number of cases, uh, Lucy yeah. Letby being one, where there is a so-called whole life order, where there is no prospect of release uh, in the person's lifetime. Most cases where there's a life sentence has a have a tariff which means the person serves that long um, and then become eligible okay. for parole that point can be moved obviously by two years and for a regular sentence you just add two years onto the top so uh, for the vast majority of cases that will be a significant okay. deterrent and right. i think as olivia practical bell's mum said um, yesterday this is such an important move out of respect for victims and their families indeed we've just got about 30 40 seconds left uh, the health secretary has announced the public inquiry into lucy letby is going to be a statutory that means mm. so they can compel yeah. witnesses to give evidence under oath do you think it's extraordinary that we're going to have to we need the powers to compel NHS managers to give evidence under oath, otherwise we can't trust them to tell the truth? Well, I think it's right that it's a statutory inquiry. It means they, they have all the powers they, they need um, to be on the safe side. And look, I think it's important we get to the bottom of this, obviously. And I think we need to make sure that NHS managers across the whole country, okay. if they encounter reports of medical misconduct, they are taken seriously, they are investigated properly, and that the doctors and nurses who raise concerns um, get treated respectfully and don't get victimised, which is what appears to have happened uh, in this case. And I'm sure the inquiry is going to get to the bottom of that. Policing Minister Chris Pope, really appreciate you joining us from Westminster. Big thanks to you. Big